everybody welcome to the homestead so what we're going to do today is talk about ham radio uh, i got my ham license back in 2009 here it is over here there's the little ham license i got my license back in 2009 it's a simple technician's license it's the lowest form of license you can get it's the easiest license you can get and it didn't take me hardly any study time to get it and i kind of want to share how i got my license with you that's one of the questions i get asked so much when people find out that i am a ham uh, and I have a license for ham radio. They say, man, how'd you get that license? You know, is, it hard, is, is the test hard? No, it's not hard. It's, it's actually very simple. And I'm going to kind of show you how, do you, can, how you yourself can get that license very quickly uh, with just a little amount of work. And so anyway, what I want to talk about today, I got two new ham units. Um, there's a volunteer fire department uh, where I live and they were upgrading their radios and they were going to throw a bunch of, i mean there was a bunch of their radios away and one of the volunteer firefighters had the great idea you know what maybe we shouldn't give them uh, just throw them away or burn them one guy had the idea of burning them i think and then taking the aluminum to be scrapped uh and aluminum prices metal prices right now are horrible but anyway one of the firefighters had the bright idea maybe we shouldn't burn them or throw them away Maybe we should see if we can get some money for them or trade and barter them or whatever. Anyway, the fire department, the volunteer department, gave these radios and a bunch of other radios like this uh, to this individual. And basically, I met him and we did a barter trade deal. And I got basically two brand new uh, ham radios. Now, I have a ham radio. It's an ICOM uh, 2100 series radio, I think, in my vehicle. And that's what I've been using for a number of years. I also have a, an ICOM handheld um, but these two are actually more powerful than the mobile unit that I currently have in my vehicle. This, these are 75 watt units, and I believe the one I have in my vehicle is a 60 watt unit. And so these are a little bit more powerful and uh, just a new, more modern version of what I have. And these are the, uh, if you're wondering, the ICOM ICV8000, the ICV8000 uh, uh, from ICOM. And these were basically never used. They sat in their vehicles for about two years. Uh, the vehicles hardly were driven all that often. They weren't used. There's, there's very little scuff marks at all, if any, on these units. Uh, they basically, basically look brand new out of the box. And uh, I even have the instruction manuals and the boxes and uh, everything that came with them. So that's really cool uh, that I got to keep all of this uh, just with a little trade and barter. And so these are my two new ham units. And what I'm going to do eventually on the homestead is put one of these units as a base station, keep the one that I have in the car, put this in another vehicle, but then also have a battery operated solar powered uh, system that I can have here in the house uh, that I can be able to use to communicate or my wife can uh, use to communicate with me as I'm traveling out and about. And you know, the real reason I got involved with ham radio was not because I'm really interested in radio or in the technology behind it. I was using it I was getting interested in it for a preparedness and survival aspect. Uh, you know, a lot of us, listen, let's, we, let's all be honest, we, we believe this country is going downhill and there could be a collapse in our future for our country and there's some hard times coming. And, you know, they can take away cell phones, they can take away cell towers and lots of different modern forms of communication, but they're never going to be able to get rid of radio frequencies. They're never going to be able to get rid of radios. It's impossible. You can make a radio out of a potato if you want to, and so, or just a tin can. There's all kinds of ways to make radios. So there's no way you're going to get rid of radio technology. It's very simple, and if you have units like this, you can use it to communicate uh, with people during a grid down situation and that is the reason i got interested in ham radio and so i've been i've been a ham radio like i said since 2009 i've got my license uh kd0 heq is my call sign and uh you can uh, if you ever you know maybe you'll hear me on the airwaves eventually i don't get on that all that often uh you know i'm just not interested in talking about j poles and and uh, different you know, antenna lengths and things like that, uh, like some of the guys on there who basically just all they talk about. I'm interested more in the, the preparedness aspect of ham radio. And when I got my license, they had taken away the Morse code requirement. So one of the questions I get all the time is, Zach, don't you have to learn Morse code to get a ham license? No, you don't. You don't have to learn Morse code. Uh, for the technician license, you don't have to know Morse code. Um, there is a simple study guide, and that's what this video is all about. If you're interested in getting your ham radio license, the simple thing you need to do is find what's called the No-Nonsense Ham Study Guide. No-Nonsense 
ham study guide. And I'm going to put a link in the description of this video so that you can easily locate and find that study guide. It's about 45 pages or so. If you take that study guide, it's designed for you to go through that study guide and read through it just one time and be able to go in and pass your test. Very simple. Amazing. And so it's really well written and I used it myself and that's how I passed it. I think I read through that maybe twice. Uh, just to be sure. I read through the study guide twice. I went in and I passed my test. No problem. If you go through that, and if you have any concept of how electronics works or how voltage and electricity works, things like that, you're even going to be a step, a step ahead. But if you have no knowledge of any of that, and you just read through that study guide, it'll give you some basics that you need to know to be able to go in and pass your test. Now, the learning never stops. You want to go ahead and continue to learn. And it was really the, the, the ham radio and, and my uh, getting started in ham radio and some of this stuff that really propelled me into learning and getting my head wrapped around uh, hooking up our solar system, our alternative energy systems here around the homestead. And so that kind of gave me a heads up on that. And so the learning never stops. Once you pass your test, there is a lot more learning you can do once you get your license. Uh, so don't stop there. But at the same time, if you just want to get your foot in the door and you want to get a ham radio license so that you can legally operate on these frequencies, um, then go ahead and look for the No Nonsense Ham Study Guide. You can find it if you just Google that, No Nonsense Ham Study Guide. It's a free study guide. Now, some of the other study guides that are no nonsense that uh, are for different license requirements, you have to pay for those. But the technician level, no nonsense, ham study guide is completely free. Um, there's a guy who's a ham radio guy who wrote that, and, and, and it's basically written so that if you read through it just one time, you should be able to go in, and, and you're able to comprehend you know, certain basic things. You should be able to go in and pass that test. Very simple. I read through it twice, and I passed it no problem. So anyway, people ask me all the time, hey, Zach, how can I get my ham license? There you go. The No Nonsense Ham Study Guide. Look it up on Google. There's a link to the, in the description of this video. You can check it out, and then I'll hopefully see you online or on the air. <laughs> All right, 73 uh, KD0HEQ signing out. We'll see you next time on an American Homestead. If you enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up button below the video. It really makes creating these videos worthwhile. If you want to make sure to never miss a new video, be sure to click the subscribe button. Now you can get your homesteading questions answered. Visit us at our contact page on anamericanhomestead.com and send us your questions. Maybe we'll pick your question for a future video or article on our website.